Hey guys, we're the Wannabe Scientists, and today we're going to be talking about radio telescopes. So as you might know, in science, we have our electromagnetic spectrum. There are seven types of waves on the electromagnetic spectrum. The radio waves are on the very left of the electromagnetic spectrum, which means that they have the longest wavelengths and the lowest frequency. Today, we use radio signals for many things such as Wi-Fi signals, cell phone signals, and TV signals. So now, we're going to talk about the history of radio telescopes and what led up to the invention. Radio telescopes really started to evolve after World War II. You guys might know a guy named Heinrich Hertz. He made the first radio wave transmitter, which transmitted waves at a wavelength of 5 meters. With discoveries that related to electromagnetism and radio waves from Einstein, Louis de Broglie, and many other scientists, there was development of types of communication. Another guy named Guglielmo Marconi sent and received radio signals from across the ocean in 1901. He also improved the technology, which is why we have radio telephone service today. Next. We started to study radio astronomy by using radio frequencies to find solar radio waves, but we failed. In 1930, Bell Telecommunications hired a physicist named Carl Jansky to investigate a problem that they were having which was related to static. So after Jansky did a couple of experiments, he found two sources of static. The first one was from local thunderstorms, and the second one was from none other than the Milky Way galaxy. So then, there was this guy named Grote Reber. He was extremely fascinated with the things that Karl Jansky did, so he decided to make his own device and conduct experiments in his backyard. This was eventually known as the world's first radio telescope with three receivers. After conducting experiments, Reber found galactic radio waves which showed contours of the Milky Way galaxy. In modern times, we have radio telescopes which are consisted of a reflector and a receiver, and they are extremely huge. Radio waves from distant celestial objects hit the reflector and then go into the feed horn which is then reflected into the receiver which is then carried out to the amplifier which takes the data and stores it in a computer. One of the greatest advantages of radio telescopes is that radio waves can be observed from everywhere on Earth. For example, we have the Lovell telescope here which is very expensive. The initial cost was 700,000 pounds. And with the other upgrades, such as the Mark IA upgrade, which made the surface a lot smoother, the cost was another 667,000 pounds. The total cost is 2.3 million US dollars in 1957, which is worth a lot more right now. Since we are building many telescopes just like the Lowell telescope, the total cost of these telescopes would be very, very low. Which means, people did not support its funding and its discoveries. Some people thought it's just not worth it. And since these radio telescopes are really really big, lots of trees had to be cut down to clear up land for these telescopes. And here's a little demonstration. These radio telescopes have allowed us to discover pulsars which are basically spinning neutron stars. Here are some radio telescopes from all over the world. Yeah!